In an industry 4.0 era, is it going to be men versus machines or machines are going to collaborate with men as we move forward? We have here with us very special guest, Mr. Samir Gandhi, Managing Director of Omron, one of the leading automation providers. Welcome to ET Auto Big Byte, uh, Samir. Thank you, Nabil. We are in a position here in India where we really need job. In such a scenario, talking about automation, how does it uh, fit to your business? Because uh, mostly we are looking out for people to be employed. You are trying to employ the machines. Right. Yeah, I think that's a very important question that you bring up, Nabil. And I think first we need to, to address this question. Let me start by talking about what exactly, how exactly automation helps. Right. To a manufacturing industry, automation helps by improving productivity, by improving quality. So what it translates into is actually better quality goods at a more competitive price to the consumers. If the consumer is able to buy something that is of a good quality and at relatively better or a competitive price, it also translates into an increase in business. Right? So for the manufacturer, it means that he can increase production and thus thereby you know, increase more capacity addition and everything else. Now, some aspects of a manufacturing process you cannot really do without automation. So if it's a high speed machine okay, that you're using to produce maybe piston rings for an automobile, there is very little that you can do without automation. Mm -hmm. There are some processes that inherently require this automation. So you think it is, a, it is going to coexist with human resource, that's what you're saying? Absolutely, it has to coexist. It, it but will and it is coexisting, yes. But if you look at the Western uh, market, there the automation level is very huge. In yeah. India, is still a huge gap. Do you think India moving forward in that direction that will have higher level of uh, automation? And what is your estimation of uh, current level of automation, especially in automotive space, and how do you see it going forward? So I think there is an inevitability to it, Davir. See, if we have to really be a, have a higher level of manufacturing contribution to our GDP, we must be more competitive in what we are making. And for that, we require a higher level of automation. Okay. We have to make for the world, even if it's for a domestic consumption, it must compete with what is globally available. When you go out to buy a car in India, you don't... You don't want to compromise on it and say, no, no, it's make in India car, so I'm okay if somehow the air conditioner doesn't work sometimes, you know. You don't want that, obviously, right? So you, you expect a higher quality, and in automation is, is inevitable there. So you, what you are pointing to is to maintain high quality, to bring global quality, you must adopt automation. That's you what you're You must saying. adopt a higher level of automation. The Indian automotive industry currently has a fairly high level of automation as compared to other manufacturing industries in the country. But it is, there's a large perception that automation means uh, you are trying to cut on the uh, manpower cost because manpower is generally very high in European market. But if you compare India versus Europe, it one is to, uh, is to five ratio. So why will an Indian manufacturing uh, adopt automation when uh, the cost of manpower is uh, very less here? Yeah, so obviously if there are some things that can be better done by a human being, a skilled human being, it's, it's kind of okay to still go with it as long as the, there is a cost-benefit analysis to it vis-a-vis -vis the automation. But like I said before, automation is not just about replacing people. It's about doing, doing better processes, making it more efficient. So by using automation, if you can produce a car in a more efficient manner, okay, produce it faster, produce it cheaper, then obviously it makes a lot of business sense to do that. Having said that, there are going to be processes that will still require people. And automation doesn't kind of replace every process. It kind of works together with people, supports workers on the shop floor to be able to do a better job. If we talk about uh, implementation of automation, what kind of implement these automotive companies, especially MSMEs, can use to enhance their productivities efficiency because we see when we talk about automation yeah. it's the smaller and medium companies which lack yeah so how can we encourage them to use this and is it viable for them 
to answer the viability question, yes, it is definitely viable. We have many customers in India in this MSME sector who are actually adopting automation. And I would even hazard a, a statement saying that their adoption rate is perhaps faster than some of the larger industries. One of the reasons, of course, is they are starting from a low base. Okay? Now, why should they use it? Again, uh, one is quality as we discussed, but the other aspect is also about the availability of resources and the availability of skilled resources. This is many times not really so easily available to the MSMEs as we think. So it makes some sense to kind of automate some of their processes. Okay, and let's come back to the shop flows. Yeah. Uh, overall manufacturing industry, if you look at hmm. uh, the ratio of machine doing the work versus human resource doing the work, what is the current ratio and how do you see it going forward? I, maybe it's not fair to do a comparison like that, machine versus humans, because even machines, to run machines, no, you need if humans. No, we are manufacturing, how hmm. much of, uh, we, I, I can understand that hmm. one uh, operator is there, he's uh, operating multiple robots. Right. So it's a kind of cobot situation that you are talking right. about, but even though, hmm. like on per person, how many machines are uh, right now in India, and how do you see it? going forward yeah. because in Europe it's huge or ja Japan it is huge. You're absolutely right. I mean if you look at robos, if we talk specifically about robos, then the current adoption of robos in India is about 3 per 10,000 workers. Okay. Whereas the global average is about 85. Hmm. And another uh, you know, number that I give you, about 5,000 robos are expected to be installed in India in this year. Okay. okay. Seems like a big number but if you look at China, China is expecting to install some 210,000 robots. So that's a magnitude of 40 hmm. that China is, uh, you know, investing in. And China labor rates are also maybe higher than India, but not so much higher as compared to the European country. So uh, when it comes to productivity, how do you put it in terms of implementation of automation like robots? So uh, there are very difficult hard numbers available here. It's very difficult to ascertain those hard numbers. But based on our assessment, on our qualitative assessment of various customer situations, we have found that generally putting in a robo pays off itself in about one and a half years by an improvement in productivity, by an improvement in quality uh, and the overall efficiency of the process. So one and a half to two years is the average ROI that you can get by using a robo or a cobot. I mean, it depends on. Uh, how you want to use that. How are you using machine learnings and AI to further strengthen your automation uh, services or automation equipment that you provide? Yeah, so uh, these uh, are new emerging, uh, you know, leading edge technologies today. And our emphasis on utilizing these, uh, in fact, for example, we launched uh, PLC, which is AI based. Uh, the emphasis is actually on using these to uh, get, uh, reduce unplanned shutdowns on the shop floor okay, to improve again productivity by reducing you know the unplanned maintenance so doing more predictive maintenance so now for some machines we are able to predict using smart sensors using AI based learning what when does this machine particular machine require a routine maintenance and by thereby we are able to extend the working hours of that machine so if we look at automotive industry, we have uh, seen major recalls happening of late, obviously because uh, uh, we are getting into producing multiple model on one platform. We try to fit components in multiple models uh, that has been uh, originally designed for one particular model. Uh, that is leading to these kind of recalls. Is there a way uh, when you talk about smart manufacturing by using automation, can we easily identify or, or rectify those kind of uh, faults that happens or occurs in the products? Yes, absolutely yes. And there are many customers of ours in India who are doing this. So for example, a large AC HVAC manufacturer for automobile HVAC, HVAC, yeah. HVAC uh, they are using vision-based quality inspection system. The vision is mounted on the robo. Mm -hmm. It is able to detect a check for about 32 odd checkpoints on a given HVAC before it leaves their factory. So doing so, they have been able to ensure that they are sending out 100% accurate HVACs. Earlier what would happen is they would send out HVACs which kind of looked similar, 
very small minor changes as you mentioned because there is a small change in the model somewhere down or the car model somewhere down the line and which would end up in a major recall for these guys and even worse this is an easy component right at least there's a recall at the manufacturing shop floor but consider other components smaller components uh, we have had we have heard these stories about uh, you know airbag sensors for example uh, or even uh, other components that mm, go into car, car brake car. components so these components when they get into a car it's almost impossible to ever find out where the problem is but once a manufacturer establishes that he had a problem with a particular batch of a component mm. how does or, or let's say for example a braking component particular a problem with a particular batch of a brake component mm. how does the automobile manufacturer figure out which cars did he actually put that batch of brake into okay. it need not be always linear so that's where we have something called traceability okay. so traceability solutions are able to check the each component and sub assemblies as they get assembled and are able to track and then using this you can actually backtrack so from a serial number of a car you could identify potentially the brake component that goes in, has gone into the car and thus do recalls only for that particular car rather than doing a general from this month to this month or this year to this year you know how do you see the automation you know because we have to leave frog to be a six uh, manufacturing uh how automation can help with the industry in terms of adopting to this yeah so again automation is inevitable there actually the usage is increasing because with bs6 components especially the engine the machining is even becoming more precise right and hence uh, the we see a greater use of robots there we see a greater use of cobots uh in terms of assembly so have you seen some kind of spike in demand of your implements with bs6 coming up like there has been a jump but on the other hand unfortunately the industry is not doing so well these days so okay so that has been balanced of, out yeah kind of balanced out yeah uh, look at india it has been known for its you know low cost manpower mm -hmm. and uh, that is contrary contradictory to your business prospects in india mm -hmm. uh, how do you see yourself selling across what kind of growth do you see in terms of uh, implementation of automation on shop floors especially in automotive and overall manufacturing sector what is your projection yeah first of all i don't think it's a contradictory thing okay. i think it's an enabler automation is an enabler to make in india okay, okay. enabler to better manufacturing in india which will help manufacturing become be a larger part of our gdp and if you have to do a 5 trillion goal as mm. the, our finance minister just set okay. that goal you know in, in last budget if you have to achieve that manufacturing has to really grow at a much faster pace than it is growing now so if we have and that's how we can absorb more people into manufacturing right we can offer employment to more people mm. and to do that you we see that's why we see a very fast or a high rate of growth for automation So on an average I would say we have been growing at about 15% plus CAGR. What is the current market share size? Market size is about 2 billion dollars for automation. Okay. And if you see uh, it's growing at about GDP plus 5 or 7 percent point. Okay. So we are talking about 12 13% uh, CAGR on the automation which is pretty healthy actually one of the few countries in the world that we Next 5 years that. how do you see the uh, size of the automation industry? So I think of course the size I expect it to kind of more double. Uh, I am really bullish about it personally because I see a great need for automation in this uh, to enable smarter manufacturing in India to enable better manufacturing. And I think it's really something that should grow faster than it is. I see greater adoption. I also see challenges in terms of having the right skill sets on the shop floor to be able to manage this kind of automation adoption. But there I see a push from the government or and from the industry uh, to actually skill up more and more people so that we can adopt automation better so if we talk about the entire manufacturing sector hmm. looking at the current slow down how do you see it uh, because you are the guys who can figure out because the demands comes as people are uh, putting new lines or new manufacturing uh, you know set up uh, your approached So looking at the condition currently how do you assess the situation you think the worst is over or is it yet to come I wish I could have a easy answer crystal ball gazing answer for that 
But my uh, personal sense is I think this year for automotive industry looks a little bit choppy and a lot of it is coming from what we are reading in the public statements and from the other uh, industry leaders. Uh, but I think uh, of course the long term and the mid term remains intact. So maybe this BS6 implementation once it is done and once the EV policy uh, that was discussed by Niti Aayog maybe about two weeks ago, once there is more clarity on that then I think the investment should really pick up again. How important is machine learning and how the smaller companies can make use of this technology going forward to enhance their efficiency and effectiveness? So uh, machine learning will become increasingly important uh, as we go further. And the key here for the, especially the smaller companies or the MSME sectors if we talk about them, I think for them it will help reduce dependence on larger organizations. They will be becoming more nimble, they can modify their production better and have better control over the quality that they make. Right? So how can they move in, the, uh, in this direction? What are the steps they should take? So for, I think it has to start with the design, overall design of the automation itself. What is it that we want to achieve? And then go to selecting the right you know, vendor. Uh, and then of course a lot of work that we as vend suppliers of automation need to do to actually make it uh, more adaptable and more acceptable and easily available to this industry. That's all. Thank you so much, Samir, for Thank talking. Thank you, Naveed. Thank, Thank you for your time. Thanks. Thanks.